Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a $400 gaming PC build. Now this is some pretty budget stuff, and yet we're still able to play pretty much any game you throw at it. So in fact, I was playing Battlefield 3 on medium settings on the $400 build just before filming this, and it handles it absolutely no problem. If you guys are looking to spend a little bit more, you can check out my $500 build here. It's basically the same thing as this, but with a few key upgrades. And if you're interested in learning how to put a computer like this together, you can check out my full tutorial right here. To kick our build off, we're going to be using an Intel Pentium G850 processor. Now a question I get asked all the time is why don't I use AMD, especially in budget builds like this? Well the G850 is a great example of why I don't. This is a basic Intel chip, and yet it's going to outperform AMD CPUs like the Quad Core Phenom X4, and it's going to take up less power while doing it. The G850 is based on the Intel Sandy Ridge architecture, and features dual cores clocked at 2.9GHz apiece. Now while it's not going to be quite as fast as something like a Core i3, you're also going to be saving a lot of money, as it only comes in at $78. For our motherboard, we're going to be using the Gigabyte 861M DS2 motherboard. Now this is the same thing that we used in the $500 gaming PC, and it's a very solid motherboard at a very reasonable price. This is an H61 board, so don't expect any frills, however it definitely will get the job done. So it supports up to 16GB of RAM, 4 hard drives, as well as has dual BIOS, which can really come in handy. For only $45, this is exactly what we want in our build. For our graphics card, we're going to be using an ASUS Radeon HD 7750. Now this is a very low powered card that gives you very high performance. So unlike a normal graphics card, which will require you to bring over a lead or two from your power supply for external power, this pulls all it needs from the motherboard. Despite needing less than 75 watts to run, this has more than enough power to handle any game you throw at it, thanks to the 1GB of GDDR5 memory, as well as the 820MHz factory overclock. For only $100, this is going to work perfectly on our build. For memory, we're going to be using 4GB of Corsair XMS3 RAM. Now this isn't anything all that spectacular, so there's no explosions or light shows or anything inside your case, but what this will do is give you more than enough RAM to handle any game you throw at it, and it's also in a single DIMM. So if you'd like, you can grab another one of these at a later date and up your build to 8GB of RAM. Regardless though, it's only going to cost you $20. For a hard drive, we're going to be using a 500GB Western Digital Caviar Blue. This is the same drive we used in the $500 PC, and it works just as well here as it did there. Now with 500GB of storage, you're going to have more than enough room for all the games you want. However, if you do want to spend a little bit more, it also does come in a 1TB variety. Regardless though, for 500GB, it's going to cost you about $67. For a power supply, we're going to be using a 500W Cooler Master Extreme Power Plus. Again, we also use this in the $500 build, and it's going to work great here, especially considering that these parts actually take up less power. Now one of the cool things about this is that it fits in very nicely with the build, so it fits in right at home with the case, and for only $28, it's really hard to go wrong. For a case, we're going to be using a Fractal Design Core 1000. Now I'm not going to lie, I actually love this little case. So it is a micro ATX form factor, so that means it's actually going to be fairly smaller than something like a full mid-tower case full mid tower, no, mid tower case, but don't let that put you off at all, as since we don't have any kind of high power of components, everything is going to fit with lots of room to spare, and on top of that, it's actually got a really nice design for only about $40. For an operating system, you may want to consider picking up a copy of Windows 7 Home Premium. Now, an operating system is not optional, however, buying Windows 7 is. So you may already have a version of Windows you want to use, you may want to use Windows 8, or you may even want to use Linux. Regardless though, if you do want to use Windows 7, it will add an additional $90. So there you guys have it, a $400 gaming PC that can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. Now do keep in mind the prices are constantly changing, so I will have links to all the parts I used in the description of this video. Since this is a custom PC, I'll have some other options in the description. So for example, if you want a different case, you want a little bit more powerful processor, you want to change up a couple things, I'll have some other suggestions in the description so you guys can feel free to change some things around and get the build exactly how you want it. Anyway guys, that's about it. If you want to check out how to build a computer, feel free to check out my tutorial right here. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.